My friend and I were sitting, enjoying our time. We decided it would be a good idea to visit with her family, so we went into the living room and ended up telling childhood stories. Her dad went outside to smoke, and the next thing we know, he steps inside telling us to hurry, it's a UFO. So of course, all of us being junkies of the supernatural, her mom, sister, and I jump up from our seats running outside. I had never seen a UFO in my life, only ever reading stories online. Before I begin, I'm a big believer in trying to prove or disprove things, always wanting to be certain before I make a statement about anything. This shined as bright as a planet in the sky, or something like that. Starting from the right of the sky, it traveled across. Not as one, but multiple. And it kept multiplying. It was incredibly bright. Brighter and bigger than anything I've ever seen in the sky, and I've watched the night many times. I cannot explain this very well with my words. I do not live near a military base or any government study thing, as far as I know. I've looked to see if NASA was doing anything. I have been researching trying to check off any other activity that it could have been. When my dad retired from the American military, my parents bought a nice house that had been built in the 1920s. It had all that beautiful old art deco look, beautiful hardwood floors, crystal chandeliers, a beautiful big fireplace, and a ghost. Now my dad was pretty much the only one in my family who wasn't a believer. He acknowledged odd things but wasn't as into paranormal stuff as the rest of us, me and my mom and to a lesser extent my younger brother. They had bought this house because it was in their price range. The couple who had it wanted to do a fast sale, funnily enough not because of the ghost but because they were having a very nasty divorce. The sort of nasty where my parents went to sign the contract, they were having a screaming fight in the living room over who would keep the cat because neither wanted it, so my dad took it. Shortly after we moved in, I got the feeling something was there. It's not like psychic or anything, but just the feeling you get when you walk into someone else's house. It's not your house you're just visiting. It was still welcoming and nice, so I wasn't worried. I had lived in other active houses and inactive houses so at 17 I knew what the feeling meant and since it wasn't very threatening I just let it be. The only time I got annoyed was when it pushed a pile of papers off my computer desk. It's pretty well known ghosts can short out electronics and I was worried about my computer so I said clearly, I don't mind you being here but please don't play with my computer I don't want it getting messed up or anything with energy. It's not your fault electronics and energy just don't mix. Whenever anything happened in my room, after that it was never near my desk. My mom was the one who taught me to address them calmly and nicely since it's just another person after all. I didn't know what it was for until a couple of years after we moved in. Like I said, we had hardwood floors all throughout, cold in winter. I was wearing socks, and unfortunately socks on varnished wood stairs is a stupid idea. Predictably, I fell. I managed to catch the banister, but I wrenched my wrists pretty badly, so sitting at the bottom of the stairs, breathing through the pain before testing if I was okay to walk, I felt something on my wrist. I fully expected one of our dogs, so I looked over, but no one was there. I could feel the hands on my wrist, it was kind of cold. Not freezing, but sort of like someone who had been outside on a cold day without gloves. And then it was gone. I think she was trying to make sure I was okay, but I didn't know it was a she until a few months later. I'd had a real late shift at work. I was in retail at the time and was exhausted. I didn't process at first that when I unlocked the front door, my dogs weren't running and barking or anything. Now the staircase was directly across from the front door. I don't know why I looked up then at that moment, if I heard something or indistinct, but at the top of the stairs were my two dogs and between them was a little girl. She was petting both of them, happy as a clam, and then she was gone. I think maybe I blinked. 
The dogs stayed there for a moment longer before they got up and rushed down the stairs with their usual welcoming barks. I never did see her like that again, but I felt her a couple of more times before we left. First when me and my brother swap rooms, and once when I'd had the first of several very, very bad fights with my boyfriend, I felt that same hand just rubbing my back reassuringly. My mom had seen her and tried talking to her, but never spoke, not sure why. We knew she knew and recognized us, so she wasn't like an echo, she was a fully aware ghost. If I had to guess, I'd say she was eight or nine. We talked about looking into the home's history, but between work and my dad's depression from retirement and my brother being in high school, it just never happened. So I don't know if she was part of the house or the land. The area we lived in was the historical district. All big old fancy houses. But she never made us feel unwelcome. She never did anything nasty or broke anything. Mostly liked to move books and papers. I think she liked to read or something. I like to think she was happy to have a nice family in her home that didn't mind her there. And of course our dogs who were pretty calm about her. I think because we had them from puppies so they had always been around her and just accepted her as part of the family. The town I lived in was hit by a terrible flood shortly after I moved so sometimes I wonder if she's okay. The house is still there though, a lot of the original stuff has gone from the basement and first floor. Hopefully though this hasn't done any damage to her. It must suck being stuck as a ghost but she was a good girl so I like to hope she's okay. My mom and dad split when I was about two. My dad eventually ended up with his current wife and they moved quite far away. My brother and I, B, would go up and see him once a month. When he first moved away, he lived in this big house that was set up really odd. You'd enter the house in a tiny hall with the front room on the right, a dining room to the left, and you'd walk through the dining room to the kitchen which had the back door to the garden as well as having the bathroom and toilet attached to the kitchen. Upstairs was my dad's bedroom, to the right, above the front room, and to the left was a really long hallway. About halfway down the hallway was my brother's room, to the left if you were just walking down the hall, and at the end you'd come face to face with the door to my room. So the story goes that the place was haunted. I was reasonably young, say about 11 or 12, they didn't want to tell me about it because they thought I'd get scared, which I understood. I found out later of the things that had happened to them whilst in the home. Stepmom had an incident where she was in her bedroom doing her hair in the mirror. She looked up in the mirror and saw a young girl standing behind her with her arms crossed over her chest. My stepmom squealed, closed her eyes, and put her head in her hands. When she looked back up, the girl was gone. There was plenty of other instances of doors opening and closing, footsteps up and down the long hall, knocking about in the attic as well as the dogs acting weird, and we had two huge Rottweilers. One day, I was staying the weekend and felt really sick. My family had made plans to go out, but I didn't feel up to it. They decided to leave me at home on my dad's PC in the care of the dogs. They didn't want to let me be alone in case something happened. Whilst I was playing on the PC, the dog went really weird. They were normally quite docile, really friendly and extremely loving. Well, they started running about the front room barking. Every once in a while, they would stop and just aggressively growl at the fireplace. I stopped and tried to calm them down, but as I knelt down next to them, one of them turned and bit me on the face. He was immediately apologetic, licking and whimpering whilst asking for cuddles, but... I was scared and hurting a bit. He didn't even break the skin so it wasn't a bad bite and felt like I was going to throw up. I ran to the bathroom and the family got home. I told them what happened and they looked really concerned but told me not to worry about it and kept an eye on us. A little something about my room. It was dark and really small. It had a tiny window as well as two huge wardrobes in the corners. I never really felt comfy in that room. 
I hated being able to see the bedroom and I have no idea why. I'd often read in bed and then try and sleep on the floor, which is really odd now that I think back on it. I just couldn't get comfy in that bed and always felt really unsafe. Later that night, we all went to bed. I liked to read before going to sleep, so I was reading to myself and slowly drifting off to sleep when the bedroom started screaming. I know that sounds weird, but there was just this insanely loud scream coming from the room. I have no idea what was going on, so I immediately panicked. I mean, who wouldn't? I tried to open my door and it wouldn't budge. I could hear my brother on the other side of the door also trying to open it, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. The screaming was too loud. I heard thumps outside the door. I had no clue what was happening and just kept trying to open the door whilst crying now. Suddenly, the screaming stopped and the door opened. My brother, dad, and stepmom were just standing there staring at me. I was sobbing and my brother hugged me and my dad asked why I was screaming and whether I saw the girl. I said I wasn't and my brother confirmed that he could hear me saying what through the screaming. I stayed in my brother's room that night. The next time I went to my dad's, he had moved homes. I hear the other stories years later. I'd heard other stories about the fireplace being pulled out and things being found, but to be honest, they sound a bit far-fetched to me. I know the above sounds the same, but I know it happened because I lived it. So last night I responded to a user that seemed to encounter Puka in Scotland. Let slip that I've seen weird stuff there and people started asking questions. I fell asleep and now I'm awake. I figured I could make a separate post as to not hijack his thread. Disclaimers, I'm on mobile. And the story is kind of long. It was a while back so details may be skewed. I'm not doing it on purpose. I also have a memory issue and some things have changed slightly. I am a bit prone to hallucinations when sleep deprived so I try to keep that in mind. However... Other people said they saw something that correlates with my story. I try to keep it to the things I remember most vividly and sort through it for clarity. I was 13 and went to go visit a lover of my mom's with her for Christmas. We were near but not on the Edinburgh area. Can't remember the village. L, the lover, wanted us to go meet her son by the reindeer pen they had in the park. She said, take a left at the church... It's easy to spot. We are Catholic Americans. Everything looked like a church except for the church. The only modest non-Gothic building in the area. We eventually found it. Elle's son was pretty young at the time, so she had to take him to the bathroom. Mom and I went to go play in the dog park. Park that had dogs, not necessarily designated area, near it, so we all see the reindeer together. There was this huge, absolutely gorgeous Irish wolfhound there, and I was infatuated with him, like a great Dane wearing a sweatshirt. His owners let me play ball with him, and I threw it just a bit too far. Being the upstanding citizen I thought I was, I walked off into the woods to find it. Mom was helping Elle's son in the bathroom. I didn't think I went too far into the woods. I could have sworn I could see the skyline when I grabbed the ball. I lived in a swampy area and was overly cautious of going too far. If I couldn't find it in ten minutes, I'd just give the owners five pounds and some apologies. I got the ball, turned around, and the festival sounded like it was behind me. Odd, I never took any previous turns. Turned again and the music was forward, so I kept moving. Something felt wrong, so I stood still. The music moved, but I didn't. So I moved opposite of it, like a scientific experiment. Next thing I know, there's this crumbled old stone junction, just two short walks in a floor with a campfire almost in embers, a coffee pot, and two dry patches. It was weird because this spot had a warm look to it, like the sky overhead was golden. When I entered the forest, it was cloudy blue. I sit down and try to warm up. I'm a cream puff when it comes to the cold. I take some small twigs, a couple of leaves, and tend to the fire. Check the coffee pot and it's empty, 
so I put a bottle of water from my bag into the corner, in case whoever was hanging out got thirsty. There was a really hungry looking old man that comes around the corner, bare bones clothing, no shoes, shaky, and his face looked famished, like a puppy sitting in front of a steak. He gives me a toothy grin and his teeth looked like mossy bark. I wasn't scared, I was worried because he looked cold, so I take off my scarf and hat and hang it on him. His laugh was a deep rumble, like a bullfrog, and I couldn't help but giggle too. We turned around and there was some lady calling my name and gesturing me to walk in her direction. I figured mom sent her and started in her direction. The old man stopped me and grunted, shaking his head in a, I don't know, dad says no kind of way. He put his hand on my cheek and pointed me to go to a different way and ushered me off. I take about 10 steps and I'm back out. I check my watch and only a few minutes have passed. That wolfhound I was playing with bounds past me and barks once or twice and proceeds to herd me back to his people. The owners see me with the ball, ask if I'm okay. I say yes and look back. The wife of the owner says I have a muddy handprint on my cheek and takes her scarf and tries to clean it off while the dog owner grunts. Hey, you like climbing trees a lot, huh? Confused, I looked up and see my hat and scarf hanging in the tree line. I didn't go back to reclaim it, just ran to go find my mom after a quick K-thanks-bye ordeal. Never told her. What felt like an hour had passed in a few minutes. It was very odd. This started when I was 17. I joined an amateur beauty contest in our small town. I began talking to myself at the mirror for hours, a practice speech or just being comfortable with myself and that self-confidence building stuff. I became vain, pretty obsessed with how I look with a full body mirror being my companion most of the time. After the pageant, I was myself again and that normal version of me does not stay more than five minutes in front of a mirror. This is when my parents, relatives, and neighbors started seeing someone that looks exactly like me in our house. Over the years, here are some scenarios, always on our second story house. Early in the morning, mom checks on me and I'm still sleeping. She goes down and I'm already sitting at the sofa. Runs to my room, I'm still sleeping. Runs to the living room, nobody's there. Mid of summer 2010, I was convincing my brother to help me set up the trampoline in our backyard. Dad walks in. He claims he just saw me standing by the staircase staring at our pictures on the wall. He said he offered some snacks, but I didn't say anything nor bothered looking in his direction. We all went to the said location. Nothing. One evening, my grandma was staying for dinner and she said she saw me go upstairs and she called my name many times, but... I didn't even bother to stop or look at her. A minute passed. I emerged from the bathroom and asked her why she was calling me. Every other member of my family was at the kitchen making dinner when this happened. I started working after college and was living two and a half hours away from home at my apartment. Relatives will see me at my bedroom window staring outside and when they call out my name, you will suddenly turn your back and shut the window close. Exactly my cousin's word as she called me after the incident adding it was very unusual the manner in which I acted and it coming from me. Sometimes neighbors will ask my mother if I was visiting or spending the weekend and that will terrify my mom. Apparently when I'm away she will not show herself to members of the family and will just stay near the window based on stories from relatives and neighbors. Mom and dad seeing me at one place when they just saw me where they came from. Their technique, call me or ask me anything. This doppelganger doesn't speak at all, but most of the time storms out and smashes doors, especially when I come running because I am eager to see her. The most recent incident was last Christmas when I was home spending time with my family. My brother knocking on the bedroom door because it's time to open our Christmas presents, and he just saw me walk inside my room and shut the door behind me. Right after he emerged from his room to fetch his phone's charger. 
I was actually downstairs with our parents waiting for him so we can start opening our presents. He was so disturbed by this event because it's his first time seeing my doppelganger and even begged all of us to check my room but, as usual, nothing there. Over time, my parents got used to this but my grandma warns me every now and then and then because she said it's a bad omen and also reprimands me every time she remembers the reason as per old folks here, it's my vanity and endless talking to the mirror that triggered this thing. They said on my case, this thing was formed due to extreme self-obsession and left the mirror when I stopped talking to it. Also, its main purpose is to replace me. They perform some ritual around the house, including offering of a live animal, usually chicken, annually so that it doesn't get strong and stays calm since they can't make her leave. Side note, she also can't leave the house. I used to be pretty freaked out about this. Used to dream about two versions of me or someone that looked exactly like me but is constantly trying to hurt me. I made myself believe that is only because of the stories old folks tell me or maybe overthinking. I am skeptical whether to believe them or not. I never saw herself and I'm turning 28 soon so that's more than 10 years of a safe, happy and healthy life of me avoiding the doppelganger's existence. On Halloween when I was small, my mom took my siblings, my best friend and I trick-or-treating. We all piled into the van and started with the stores. It was early, possibly no later than four. She would take us out about an hour before my dad got out of work so we could get all the kitty spots out of the way. On this specific trip, one of the tires ended up popping and we had to stop at the local mechanic in our small town. His shop isn't very big and has a very small part of the lot. So my mom ended up parking in the open area next to his building. This wasn't a problem because the building next to his was abandoned and had been for many years. It is a large four-story structure. Having been, in its prime, a hotel and later, towards the end, a retirement home, my mom told me and my friend to stay put and watch my sleeping brother while we wait for my dad. She let my older sisters walk to the nearby houses that were in her view from the corner of the street where she stood. She had parked fairly close to the building and from in the suburban I could see the emergency staircase. I could also see inside the building. My best friend of the time was older than me by about three years, and due to this she knew a few things I didn't know about where we were. Her sister had told her stories about the place, and none of them were very nice. She began to tell me a few ghost stories about it. I half listened and chose to continue to peer into the windows, and that's when I saw someone. It looked like a man. He saw me and began to wave at me with a big smile. I cut my friend off asking if she could see the man. She looked out of the vehicle and up into the window I pointed at. Mm, nobody. I don't see anybody. I couldn't believe her. I figured maybe she couldn't see the window I was talking about. I dragged her out of the suburban and toward the stairs. The man had managed to work his way down a flight in the time it took us to get out. I pointed to him again. There. Do you see him? She looked at me like I was crazy. No. She was getting scared. She told me she was going back inside and walked away from me. I turned back towards the man. He was an older gentleman on the thicker side, wearing a white t-shirt and grey sweats. He had a comb over and a bulbous nose. He seemed very eager to talk to me. Hi there, little girl. He smiled wider before and continuing. Can you see me? I thought that was a silly question. Mm, yes? I yelled back to him. I can see you. He seemed over the moon about me replying. He saw I had a bag in my hand. Are you trick-or-treating? I got some candy up here. I got a little nervous, feeling like I was doing something wrong. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers and... Mom said not to take candy from strangers either. He seemed to get the slightest bit irritated by my response. 
Hey, listen here, kiddo. My name is John Meitner. I'm 65 years old. I used to be in the military when I was younger, and now I live here. He smiled at me very kindly once again. So now tell me about you. I told him my first name and the grade I was in, and how old I was too. Well, there you go. We aren't strangers anymore. Now you can come and get this candy. I took a step forward, honestly thinking about climbing up the stairs and getting it. He noticed my hesitation. He seemed to get a little more desperate. Come on, kiddo. I got some really nice candy up here and toys, too. Oh, I've got all sorts of toys up here. Something seemed off. I was getting scared. I started to shake my head no. Oh, that's okay. I think I've had enough candy and I have toys at home. He pleaded with me again. Come on, kid. You're the first person I'm going to give a candy to today. They're really good. I'll, I'll give you a whole bunch. I was really swaying at this point, but I didn't want to get in trouble, at least not by myself. I was really smart, though, and I figured if he really wanted to give me candy, there was definitely another solution. Well, mister, why don't you uh, come down here and give me some? He got visibly frustrated. I, I can't. I can't leave this place. I would, but I've got really bad knees and the stairs hurt me. He forced a big smile. But you are young. I bet you could sprint right up those stairs and get all the goodies I got here. I couldn't. I really wanted to, but I couldn't. Decidedly, I responded. That's okay. I don't want the candy. It's okay. I think maybe I should just go now. He seemed pretty mad at my response. He yelled at me as I opened the door and began to crawl back in the vehicle. You're missing out, kid. You're making a big mistake. I closed the door, feeling really anxious. I turned to my friend and said, Did you see this man? He said he has a lot of candy. I didn't want to go by myself, though, but... I mean, if you go with me... She got scared again. She grabbed my hand and said, There's no one there. You were talking to yourself. Stop joking. You're really starting to scare me. I decided to let her think I had been joking because I realized the whole time I thought she was pretending not to see him. Maybe he really wasn't there. This was in 2007. I was in my mid-twenties and would go and look for places for my friends and me to party. Not bars or houses, but just places that seem cool to hang out. My friend Scott brings up that he knows of this place called the Haunted Mansion. I was never a believer in ghosts and say it sounds like a blast, let's check it out. I instantly fell in love. It's a few miles from Van Buren in Riverside, California. Driving up there, there's no sidewalk or concrete, it's all dirt for about an eighth of a mile with some old dead plants that were more than likely at one time a large garden with dense trees on both sides. The mansion itself is on a vista with a steep round driveway up to what used to be a fountain in a circular driveway, a burnt down mansion with some standing but burnt framework, a pool and a garage that had a hole in it with a fire pit in the middle. So it was great for the California winter. Going there once every other week or so depending on if the usual faces get the time off work to come out. So we had gone there quite often over four months. After a few nights, Scott told me the story of what happened to the family that lived there. They had an unstable kid that one day lost it, grabbed a shotgun, killed his siblings and mother, and when the father drove home, lastly he burned the house down before taking his own life. I never really cared and said, oh, telling some cheesy ghost stories, huh? I would eat those words. One night, my ex had gone to look at the area as it is interesting and got really lost. When I walk and finally found her an hour later, she's a mile away and when we get back was acting really strange. Not just a little odd, but grabbing her bag for the night and threw it in the fire. Weird. I struck it up to her being really drunk at the time, but 
looking back was more than likely a form of possession. The night of the big encounter, I decided to bring a few more friends than normal, so we had about 13 people there. Other than that, nothing's different, we were doing our normal thing, drinking beer and a few of us smoking. One of my friends I've known for a long time, I'll call Daniel, walks off and says he wants to take a look at this place and that it seems really cool. I say, yeah man, be careful, not to get lost as my ex did. Dan says no worries, he won't go too far, it's hard to miss the fire. Scott at this point is complaining that he might have an asthma attack. I never knew you had an asthma attack, I say. He replies, I don't normally. I keep an inhaler as it doesn't happen that much, but it decided to happen tonight. As we'd all been drinking, can someone help, I ask. He says if I feel worse, I'll call Pat. After, say, about an hour or so, Dan comes out from the darkness and asks for me to come with him. I walk with him and he is talking about how he doesn't want to freak everyone else out. He says he keeps seeing this car doing strange things and is wondering if anyone else is coming. I say no, who is here is all that is coming. We stand there for about ten minutes. I see a car's headlights turn on, move forward five or so feet, stop and turn the lights off but there are no tail lights on it. Another ten or so minutes the same thing happens. I ask Dan, are you going to hang out here for a while? He says yeah, this place is really cool. I hand him a few beers and he goes about his own thing. Scott, that has been having problems, asks if he can use my cell phone as his has no signal and needs to call Pat. He is really going to have an attack. I figured if he is going to come out, he might be able to see that car and ask him to check it out on his way up. About half an hour passes and my friend that was on the lookout is back at the party as the car is still moving slowly but not really doing anything. Pat arrives, gives Scott his inhaler, and after he is a bit better, I ask Pat if he saw anything. He says no, but he'll check again on his way out. I call him when he drives off, and I explain, when you are almost at the exit, it will be at the end of the trees and on your right. He says, no, I see nothing at all. I'm looking at him from the vista, and he is even directly facing where the car was last pointed with his brights on. I say thanks to Pat for helping out Scott again and drive home safely. At this point, I have told everyone what is going on and that the car more than likely moved on, but we check it out every 30 or so minutes to make sure he was gone. After a few hours, Dan, Scott, and I go to check. The car is returned and it has started doing its creeping up thing again, so we stand there. The others have been waiting to see this strange car, so Dan walks off to get them while I watch. Four or five of them come up. The car has become a bit more frequent with its creeping at this point. The other friends are saying maybe they did not know we were all up here and maybe it's the cops. Then all of a sudden, it turns onto the dirt road and not stopping. We all freak out as we think it is the cops. We all start running, I tell the ones that are driving to turn off their headlights so we are harder to see. We drive down the roundabout, I am the second car out of the three. I and the front car see lights, not in front of us, but going up above us on the right side, going up a nearly sheer cliff. We turn our headlights on and haul it out of there. I have the fastest car in the group and book it to the front first. I went so fast that I can hear my tires squealing on the dirt. I never knew that could happen. I am almost at the end of the dirt and am looking down the road on the right side as we get to the end. I see a car coming down the road not far enough so I can make a safe turn in time. While I wait for the car to pass, I check left for another possible car and I see smoke coming out of the ground. No embers, nothing. The other friends see this too and finally the car passes and we all get out of there. I know a lot of people think that this is a hoax because it's in Scotland, but I don't know how to explain this. I'm extremely familiar with wendigos, skinwalkers, flesh gates, all that stuff, and there is probably a non-Native American possibility that I'm unaware of, but the only explanation to me is skinwalker. I'm a teenager, 
won't disclose age, and I go to a public high school in Perthshire, Scotland. It's mostly a rural area with mostly towns, villages, and just houses dotting the landscape, although there are two major cities in my area. The high school I go to is in a medium-ish sized town, and for privacy reasons I will not disclose its name. Not many people have many paranormal encounters, although a few people claim to have seen ghosts and whatnot. I live in a largest house in the middle of a field with my family. It's not too far from the town I go to school in, but I usually take the bus in just because I'm a lazy git. Sometimes me and my mates, let's call them E, J, and C, take a path through a nearby forest to come back to my place where we just play video games and that sort of stuff. This particular night, my parents were out of town and we decided to drink a bit of booze that we had in the mini fridge in my room. I didn't try much. I'm not much of a drinker and beer's not my thing, or C's really. E and J, however, they went all out. They got really late, or rather early, and they decided to leave and head home. I said bye to them, then headed back up to my room to play some more games. After about half an hour later, I heard a loud banging on my door. It was J and E. I let them in, and they started panicking. C goes home a different way than them. He lives a bit closer to me than the others. E and J said that they were walking through the woods, and they saw a tall, skinny-looking bloke pelting it towards them. They panicked and legged it back to my house while the skinny fellow gave chase. My mind went back to when another friend, somewhat of a paranormal buff, told me about wendigos and skinwalkers. I called 999 and said that a prowler was lurking around our house and had chased my mates back to my house. I gave the operator my address and said that they'd have a car or two to my house in about an hour and a half. Apparently there was a big traffic incident. In the meantime, she said, Arm yourselves, lock all doors and windows, and lock yourself in a room. We did that, grabbing knives from the kitchen and barricading ourselves inside my bedroom. After a while, we heard heavy footsteps around our house, and thinking it was the police, I peered out the window. What I saw was much worse. It was E. It looked exactly the same as her. I knew that she was sitting, crying in my room. I freaked out and saw me. What is that thing? Whatever was outside could speak, and it sounded exactly like Jay. It was a skinwalker. I remember the description from my other horror weirdo friend. It looked like my friend, but sounded like my other friend. It must have been confused, and that made it scarier. We heard sirens, and the thing ran off into the woods. We told the police officers everything, and they checked it out. The officers left, and after saying that the woods were cleared, they muttered something about stupid prank callers. After they left, we heard an inhuman shriek, but still sort of human-like. We didn't sleep at all that night. I believe that what we saw was a skinwalker. I hope to God Almighty that I never have to face that bloody thing again. However, if I do, I'll make a follow-up and let you know. I want to start off by saying I don't believe in ghosts myself. I grew up very superstitious, but once I grew into adulthood, I didn't think paranormal explanations made sense, and I'm still agnostic to the existence of spirits. Still, paranormal encounter stories excite me and I love hearing them and suspending my disbelief. Anyways, when I was younger, I had a great aunt who was a psychic. Not the typical kind that read your fortune or anything. She was a staunch Catholic and basically just knew stuff she had no way of knowing. She saw it as a gift from God. To give an example, one time when my mom was pregnant with my older sister, she experienced some bleeding and went to the hospital. Only her and my baby knew she was there, but not long after, she received a call from her aunt asking, What's wrong with your baby? There are more examples, but this is the only one I can remember off the top of my head. Her daughters, my mom's cousins, thought they had a bit of that gift too, though not as prominent. These relatives lived up in the Adirondacks, and every year during the summer we used to visit them. 
I guess when I was around three we planned another trip up. But one morning, about a week before the trip, my mom woke up, opened her eyes, and for a split second saw a white figure at the foot of her bed. She thought it was weird, but said nothing, until it happened again, and again, every day for a week. Finally, she told my dad, who froze and said, I've been seeing that too. Weirded out, they continued with the trip as planned. During a night around a campfire, they told my mom's cousin about it and her immediate response, Watch your children. Someone's telling you to watch your children. That spooked them, but they didn't know what to make of it. Some time into the trip, we as a family went to the cemetery where my mom's mom was buried to visit graves. I remember none of this, but from what I'm told, I stood with my dad, who was a little ways away from my mom and sister. He was busy with something and I asked where mom was. Over that hill. He told tiny toddler me and pointed to a small hill in the cemetery. I saw the bigger hill the road followed. Eventually my mom and dad met up again but asking where I was. Panic set in. My mom suddenly remembered the fireside conversation with her cousin. They didn't watch me and I went missing in the Adirondacks. And they still haven't found me to this day. Just kidding. After a lot of panicking and searching, they found me sitting outside a gas station up the road, crying my little eyes out. Now, the moral of the story, if you see spooky white figures in your room, don't let your toddlers wander around graveyards in the mountains. Honestly, there's some big animals and weird people up there, so I was lucky. I am at work right now as I'm writing this. I was in the bathroom and the lights just turned off. There's no one else in here with me. I was in our bomb shelter earlier. I work at a radio station. It was also here during war times, so we have a bomb shelter and the door closes behind me and locks. I had to text my mom to come and open it for me. Since I'm only 14, I work with my mom. She was so confused as I told her everything. She told me that they had a radio DJ die in one of the studios, backing up with more people telling me the same thing. It made me remember that I saw the studio door, the studio that she died in, close on its own the other day. I told my mom about it after I saw it. If you guys want more updates, just ask and I'll provide them if anything else happens. Update 1. So I'm home now. As I'm writing replies to you guys, I look down and my arms dripping with blood. If someone can tell me how to add pictures, I'm new to Reddit, I'll show you guys. Update 3. It's 1 in the morning, and I'm hearing stuff in the hallway. It sounds like screaming. I don't have my phone and my laptop doesn't record. It's very faint, but it's there. No doubt about that. The cut on my arm is just getting deeper and deeper for some reason. It's very random. I'm thinking it may just be my dog, but my dog doesn't hiss like that. I don't know. There's an explanation for it, right? There has to be. God, I hope there is. Update 4. It's Sunday, March 17th, 2019. The time is currently 8.06pm. I've been looking up what may have caused the cut and there's no logical explanation as to what exactly happened. It keeps opening up wider and wider like every hour. I got another cut today. It hasn't been very eventful other than that. I will record the studio tomorrow after school and hopefully an interview with someone that has worked there a while. I've been hearing stuff inside of my house but it goes away as soon as I pull out my phone. Another thing I think I should add. Ever since I've been hearing and seeing stuff simultaneously about two months ago... My little six-year-old brother has been having random laughing outbursts, growling at me and my mom trying to attack us and just rolling around on floors. My mom has told me that I stand over her at night and I wake up at exactly 12.36 every night. If anyone can explain this, is my brother just being a little kid because that's the best explanation I can think of. Have I developed a new sleepwalking habit? Update number five. 
I got sick this morning. I'm staying home. Maybe I can catch some of this stuff on camera. I'm slowly losing my appetite. I eat once, maybe twice a day. I was told I was over my mom's bed again. I'm hearing whispers as I write this. I was thinking about ending my own life this morning. It's a strange fascination I have after surviving it so many times, and I hear a raspy, aggressive voice say, Do it. Do it again. Over and over until I eventually just throw up, and then it stops. I don't know why it stopped after I threw up. I need some closure on what is happening. Update 6 Hey guys, I'm sorry I haven't been very active. I have some school-related encounters. The other day, my parents split up and my mom's been lashing out a bit. I went to talk to my school counselor about this. She left the room for a minute or two and I saw from the corner of my eye her filing cabinet drawer slowly open. I told her about it and didn't really believe me, I guess. When we were talking, the door opened. She called out to anyone that might have been there, but no one answered. She checked outside and no one was there. This was Tuesday. It's now Thursday. I went out to get some water during history class and I thought I heard my friend call my name. I turned around and no one was there. I kept walking and kept hearing it. I just hurried up and walked back to class, so that's really all I have for now. I'm sorry to disappoint. I also haven't gotten around to adding pictures of the station because the other day I got suspended from school so my mom took my phone. It's been pretty hard. Update number 7. There will be a lot of updates to this story. I've been getting a lot of meditation references. Thanks for that, everyone. There's been a few things that have happened. My shoulder blades have been feeling like they were being stabbed repeatedly. I've been taking meds for it. I've also been seeing things a lot too. The other day I was in sleep paralysis and saw someone standing over me. The next day my door started rattling. It would happen, then stop, and then happen again. Please, I really, really don't know what to do at this point. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, my flap is always open.